Next step is this is my spring checker. It's an old Remac, and this is a calibration spring. At 2250, it's at 58 pounds, and at 2 inches, it's 117. So you go in there. I always check my calibration on my spring checker every couple of cylinder heads. I go by and verify because these things can come out of calibration pretty good. So two two fifty. Now look at my dial. It's saying I need to have 58 pounds. Wow, it's like 59 to 60 pounds. So that's the high side. Let's go to the low side at 2 inches. So you have to check it both ways, a high and a low side. And I'm about a pound and a half over what it should be on the other side. Let's see what I get at two inches. It's asking for 117. I'm exactly at 119 pounds so it's two pounds higher to the side I'm not going to go in here and really fool with recalibrating this right now because within a pound or two I'm okay I know it's a pound or two over I'm not going to sweat that unless I come up with some kind of weird reading on the springs okay so now let me show you how I do this first thing I do it comes with these shims all aluminum heads has to have a shim that the spring sets on I verify that it's set so it's a little bit tight but it will snap in place this is the factory LT1 shim well it's got a thickness and the thickness on it is about 32,000 so I always write the shim thickness at 0.032 alright then I'll take and this is one of the things I'll do uh, sometimes when you're putting the springs on it makes it easier I'll just put a dab of oil on the spring perches where that shim's going to lay so it acts like kind of an adhesive a glue it keeps it from moving around so I'll go in there and I'm going to go ahead and put shims on two of them I do an initial check I check every single spring on every single install height on the head you never know when you're going to get a spring that might be off a few pounds and the only way to make sure he's got the right stuff is to set this right here in a locking mode and then check every spring and then check every install height 90% of the shops I know of all they'll do is check one or two springs or one or two install heights and they Go ahead and say, oh, it's all right. They send them on down the road. This is not the way it's done here at Head Bites. Every single one is checked and verified because on a situation like this, you get one or two springs or something that's clamped a little more. It could lead to coil bind or it could throw 10 or 20 pounds of pressure. And that's not what we want to do because that this is a roller cam for sure. But even though it can be rough on them roller needle bearings if you get too high, so it's just best to check every single one so that you know what you get. All right. I got the shim. Then I take and put, take a couple of locks. Let me get you a little close-up view. Okay. Then I put the retainer in. Put the new hardened comp cam 7-degree keepers in there. And then... Pull the retainer up, and then I pick off of the very edge. They actually have a tool for this that I got, but just on the initial checkup, it ain't what I do. And I measure the height from the top of the retainer to the pad, and I'm coming up with like 1,700. So I'm going to write 1,700. I then take them off. Wow, I just noticed something right here. 
All right, I'm going to have to do a little more calculation because I got a high difference. The retainer is not totally flat. Okay. Okay, we just checked the retainer spring height, and we ended up, I'll go ahead and show you this real quick, at 118 underneath the retainer. I was coming up with a 1.7 going off the top, but I remember these beehives had this big swoop in them. Um, perfectly honest with you, I'm not a beehive fan. I've never liked them. Any of the performance people that are in this, the professional engine builders, none of them use the beehive spring unless they're in a situation that through rocker clearance or whatever, or mainly the LS1 and up motors, have to have it, but nothing beats a tried and true double spring, even though their claim to fame is because of the the winding and conical design of it, that it has a better pressure across all lifts than what a double spring. What about the oscillation? Oscillation is the fact that you got one spring going one direction and it's wind one in the other, and it the double spring does a lot better job of controlling oscillation than these dead blame single beehives. I don't I tell any of my customers unless they buy them and hand them to me, I do not like them. I'd much rather use a double spring. In my opinion, they're a lot better, but that's my opinion. Okay. Anyway, as you can see. Right now, we got about a 1805. You can move it a little bit. 1810 install height. Uh, this card from Comp Cams is saying, as you can see, that um, get you in there, that it covers 625 max lift. It wants 125 pounds of seat pressure at a 1800 install height. Gives 367 open load coil bind at 1100. So let's verify their numbers and make sure this is correct. Okay? So when I check it, I put the measurement, which is 1820, or excuse me, 1815. When I pull it down, notice that when it starts to make contact, it's right there. You take and wiggle it till you feel it start to grab it. I'm right at 138 pounds. So we take off the two or three pounds, it was a touch high, and what we got is 135 to 136 pounds. All right, let's stop and we'll show you how we check and verify it. Okay, I've got the caliper set to 1210, so we're gonna pull her down and squeeze her. And right when it starts to touch, I'm looking at 340 pounds at 1, 2, 10 lift. So 340 pounds, put the 2 pounds in there, what? Uh, 338 pounds. We had an incident with this that I wanted to show everybody who's got the LT1 or who's familiar with these Beehive Springs. Uh, these are the springs, this is the pack, comp cams number 648-16s that we switched to. In the book, it shows the use of either these keepers right here or the standard 7-degree uh, green heat-treated locks. Now, the best way to show you this and describe it is just to put the keepers on and bring the um, retainer up to it. Now, I'm trying to get in close enough with the camera. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but I can try. Okay, do you see how much of that keeper is sticking? I would say probably about 125 thousandths from the top of the keeper that's exposed. If I turn it around this way to you to let you see it, okay, you can see how, I'm trying to rotate it where you can see it, you can see how much of the keeper is exposed. Now watch what happens when I put the other keeper, which is a much thinner keeper, on here. This is the right one for this beehive chromoly keeper situation. 
Now look at it. Look what we got. Okay, I'm going to set it up straight and try to zoom in. I mean, it's almost right here level with the retainer. I don't understand why comp cams would do that because I don't know how many of you people know this out there, but these little keeper grooves, see, it's just a lot better lock altogether. These little keeper grooves that's in the center and that groove on the valve is just a locator. The actual pressure that holds it is the fact that the, that the degrees pushes the keeper against the retainer. That's the clamping force that's holding the valve. It is not the groove here and not the groove that holds it in place. That is absolutely is not what is uh, holding a retainer in place. So what bothered me was with at least twice the amount distance that it was that, that the that the retainer had that it was sticking out of I just felt too uncomfortable running it I have heard and I can't say from who that comp has had problems or that this retainer using the seven degree keeper that ain't the right word to say it ain't comp has had problems dropping valves because as you can see right here you would only be having half of this distance effectively pushing against the retainer, whereas with the black keeper, it's almost all the way up to the top. Now here you get a view. Look how much thicker that the green retainer is than the black, uh, bl excuse me, the green keeper over the black keeper. So right in the middle of that, I called my customer, told him what was going on, and he agreed to go ahead and get the better chrome molly keeper that was intended for this retainer. And while he was at it, I'm, and I'm really glad he done this because I was going to go ahead and give him a stock set of factory valves. He decided that he might be spraying it. So he went ahead and stepped up to a stainless valve, which I was really happy with that. So we solved two problems. Now I feel 100% better. I'm not saying that these green keepers won't work, but if I feel uncomfortable with it and I don't like it, I just don't let it go out my door. I'm not going to do it. It's that simple. And with only three quarters to two thirds of the keeper grabbing a hold of the retainer, I just simply did not want to do it. That in place, the last thing now I got to do, swap the valves out. And go ahead and put the heads together. Got just enough film for a final on the manifold.